Welcome to Ask, Ask a, a Puppy, Puppy Trader Show, Show, episode 154. 154. I'm Bethany. This is Sparky. This is Benny. Hi. <laughs> Benny is a pretty big doodle that I'm holding. <laughs> okay. I remember him being smaller because I saw him a week ago and was <laughs> significantly smaller a week ago. <laughs> you are a big licker though. All, All right, right, guys. We're. I want to point some out really quick because you're going to see us do a few things. Benny's a big licker, by the way. This is a little bit of anxiety and boredom, doesn't know what to do with himself. You're gonna see Beth and I at probably one point do what we call a body block, which is spatial pressure. He might be licking, we'll just do a, no. Good. Oh my God, that works so well. Yeah, we'll see how long, because we're distracted. It won't last long. All right, guys, we're gonna dive into your questions, but please, nope. if you're live, please Good. put them down below in the comments. We love it, because you can give us feedback and we can be a little bit more thorough. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in with, uh, is Daya? Sure. How do you stop your puppy from chewing on their leash when back tied? You know what? This is a really normal thing. If your puppy hasn't nope. learned place, it's even nope. harder for your puppy nope. to be back tied. And so make sure that not only have you taught place with food, but you've also done a balanced training approach where when they get up, you move in with body language, the way you saw Sparky moving in for obsessive licking to teach the puppy to reset themselves back on place. Now I will say when they're back tied, they don't have to be on place, but there's a correlation between that connection of backing up, calming down and being able to be, to be back tied. You have anything to add? No, that was good. I'm sorry. I didn't even hear the question. I was, I was focused on the licking. I was going to also say that you could try like a pet corrector, like no, you know, and see if the puppy settles back and then make sure you redirect them to their Nyla bone because if they're chewing, then they, they need something else to do. You haven't practiced enough boredom work yet. And so you can give them a Nyla bone, something to redirect them to. All right, now I got something. Now I uh, realize what the question was. Oh, okay. <laughs> you mentioned boredom, which is what I love. The reason we do place guys is not just to put a dog on place. It's to teach them how to be bored like we learn in school yeah. and how to eventually become okay with it because a dog who's okay with being bored usually isn't very anxious. That's, That's like a big thing that we teach in our That's program. True. Yeah, we don't want to constantly pacify them, but mm -hmm. your puppy just may not quite be ready yet for, oh, okay, for all those steps. Benny, where are you going? Hi. Okay. He's like, I'm going over the back of that couch and I'm going to go give Sparky licks. Nikki says, how often should my eight month old golden doodle poop? He's holding it for hours. Is it stubbornness? You know, depending on the type of food you're feeding, yeah. puppies don't need to go that often sometimes. Like when I'm feeding a raw food diet to my dogs, they hardly ever go because they're using all those. I got one those, poop. One poop a day on raw food. Yeah, they're using all those nutrients. And so mm -hmm. it, I, I'm not sure why it would be stubbornness. I'd need a bit more information. I think you honestly need to gauge your food are you on a grain free diet are you on a whole food diet are you on a cooked food diet are you on a raw food diet because all of those change a grain free diet you're going to get probably two maybe three poops a day yeah. because they have more filler in it yeah. and it's actually okay to have a little bit of filler not like the bad fillers but having whole grains and all that kind of stuff in there it's not it, there's a lot of different studies for dog food than there was even five years ago i recommend doing some more research but a grain free formula is going to have much smaller poops a grain formula is gonna have much bigger poops a raw diet you're probably gonna get one poop a day a cooked diet like uh, just food for dogs around us is like a uh, cooked food with turkey and noodles and all that uh, okay. and you're probably gonna get two maybe three poops a day so it's a little bit different depending on the it, food yeah it's just do. different depending on the food that you've got mm -hmm. and so if you think there's some stubbornness then just try some exercise add an egg you know, something to his meal. <laughs> He's heavy. <laughs> I've heard about the egg one, yeah. Yeah, uh, something like that just to, just to help you out. Yep. Why be careful with eggshells? Um, a lot of times when they eat them, they go up in their gum line. Ah. So they just, they have to be a bit of an older dog with stronger teeth to be able to crush. If they have I the always, sharp puppy teeth. I always blend teeth, them. I always blend them, so. Oh, that's good. So I just don't, it's, yeah. It's you blend the eggshell too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? I just wow. blend it up. You never heard that. That's cool. Okay, because if I, well, it's, it just seemed finer powder, just made it seem easier, easier to me to mix, to mix yeah. into the raw food. Yeah, yeah significantly. Okay, uh, should you let your puppy cry it out in the crate? I have an eight month old toy poodle fully trained. Puppy number two though, 12 weeks old, is not doing so well. Cries for 12 hours before sleep, help. 
Honestly, you need a program. Yeah. You need like, how is that puppy doing at thresholds, crate threshold, waiting for food, front and back door thresholds. Are you holding this puppy the same amount you held your first puppy and it wasn't an issue? This puppy probably can't handle that much closeness. There are such things as a genetic predisposition. Yep. They could be a different dog up here. Just brain chemistry could be different. Uh, no dog is the same, guarantee that. But you're looking for a balanced dog training program, someone who's gonna help you find a balance with your dog. Yeah, I agreed. Um, I do see your questions on there. We are gonna get to them. There's just a couple that we wanna do on here first because they're short and quick. But don't you leave don't Instagram worry. people. I even got TikTok going this time. We, we gotcha, we gotcha. Okay, real quick from um, Address LP. So they got a puppy and they kinda gave me their schedule. It all looks good. They're struggling because their puppy, still their multi-poo, almost six months old, still won't go to their crate. They go like all spaghetti-like and have to be picked up and put in. And uh, and they just, they don't wanna have to do that anymore. You know, my suggestion would be, whenever your puppy is like that and they're like half asleep and you just pick them up and put them in crate and they're fine, keep doing that. But make sure you're working on crate at other times mm -hmm. of the day for fun. Not Ooh. just going in for two hours because then they have only an association, which might even become a little bit more negative yep. because they're going in for so long. Um, are you gonna go over the routine or you want me to? No, go ahead. They come out of the crate, they do it. So I'm bringing out my dog from the crate. I know they have to go potty. I take them out for a potty. I actually bring them back into my crate room and I have them go in and out for food. Going in, give a treat, and I don't give a treat for the break to come out. I'm trying to reward and build drive to want to go in, yep. not just to dart out for that treat. And I'll do it five, 10 times, but then I'm gonna go give an extra 20 minutes of free time after that as well. So they actually get their time out of the crate and they don't only associate it for long periods in the crate. And you might already be practicing place. Mm -hmm. So super place easy, coming, yeah. place come house. We call crate house, you know, mm -hmm. come place, come house. And it ends up being this boom, boom, boom. And then when they're really good at it, you should start to slow them down and, yep. and house down walk out you know but anyway there's lots of things you can do as far as that goes you just got to make it part of your routine make we need, it fun make, make it, it very fun, fun. Yeah. if you're doing slow repetitions that's not fun they want to go quick give lots of rewards but as soon as they're going crazy and loving it you need to slow down <laughs> um okay we got a question from a blog from our blog not a blog our blog <laughs> all right <laughs> my, andrea, perez. <laughs> andrea perez says my 13 oh you don't want to say the last name because I couldn't do, I couldn't roll my, I couldn't do the accent for that one. I, I got a good R. That's all I got. I'm sorry. <laughs> my 13 week old puppy isn't lasting all night. I'm take, whoa, guys, I'm barking. Um, I'm taking her out every three hours. Otherwise, she'd be wet in the morning. Is this normal? Should she be sleeping through the night? There is no normal. Yeah, but 13 weeks is. It's not. Is it a small breed puppy? Young. Yeah. Because I you had have a breed. Do you have a breed? No, we don't have a breed. But uh, my little dog, I had a Maltese mix. I have a Maltese mix, and she's old now. But when she was young, she had to go out every three, four hours. At night? Yeah, for weeks. We're, we're big dog owners at home, but yeah. we do train a lot of young puppies here. Yeah. The overnight part, that can be difficult. Um, I'd be looking for a few things. When's the last time you give water? Yes. If it's at 6 p.m., then you're doing it right. Uh, are you measuring your water? It's a half cup of water for every 30 pounds of body weight every two to three hours. Half, half cup of water, 30 pounds of body weight every two to three hours. So if per you're giving 30, so. a good amount of water, <laughs> like even at 6 p.m. for your final one, your puppy might hold that, even go potty right before bed, but still have some left in the tank. Yeah. So I would gauge the amount of water you're given. Don't give free water. You should always drop it down because water's a resource. It's training as well. Yeah. You make them sit, they wait, you build impulse control through yeah. that sit and wait. You say break as you give it to them. And I just say no water three hours before bed, but you give it more often through the mm -hmm. day. But three hours before bed, don't give any water. If you happen to play with your dog or something, just give them like a little piece of ice, you know, something like that that they can, the they can kick That's around. Um, if you're afraid, they might be thirsty before bed. And I would do a little tweak. So if you go to bed at say 11 o'clock, 11 p.m., you're gonna take your puppy out at like 10, 10, 15. And then it's up to you if you decide to do something with your puppy or not, nothing too strenuous. Um, but then you're 
you're going to brush your teeth, you're like you're in jammies, like you're all ready to go, and then you're gonna take them out the second. Final potty. Yeah, the final potty, the second before you go to bed. <laughs> Even if you just did it 30, 45 minutes ago, because if you're having that level of problem, especially if it's a small breed dog, they might squirt out a little bit more and that might help. But you just need to gradually increase it three and a half hours for two weeks four hours or maybe a week. I might try a week and then and do it that way. That's a good but thing to mention. You're, you're not going to get eight hours after this conversation. No, 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 you're going to no. get maybe four in a week, maybe <laughs> yeah. five in a month, that type of thing. But I want to make sure I have something really excited to announce. I want to make sure I let you guys know we don't have the link for it oh. yet in our bio, but we're going to very soon. So just look for it. We are going to do a free potty training power hour webinar where we're going to go over all of the specifics on potty training young puppies we're going to be doing that on june 26th so make sure you look for that sign up okay it's going to be cool we got a lot of stuff we're putting into it too all right um really quick max amount of time you should leave a dog in you should leave a dog that is 8 to 12 weeks old and it's a labrador there is no max amount of time that's There's not a not. fair question but you got a lab, man. They go forever. They usually the can. Yeah, they stuff. can usually go for a chunk of time. Sorry, but Just they, know that the longer you, you wait to have someone come and let your you know puppy out to pee, they're going to pee on puppy pads that you have them out mm -hmm. on. Or if they're outdoor dogs, make sure they have like a really safe enclosure. But the longer, the longer you wait to do the potty training, you know, on a schedule rather than they go when they want, the longer it takes to potty train. So just keep that in mind. Do you have anything you want to add to that one? No, I think I actually read it differently. I think I went down the wrong path when I answered it. <laughs> Whatever your answer, your answer gave the answer. Because I assumed they meant leave the puppy alone. Uh, I thought they meant like not have them potty, like hold potty and crate. Oh, may well, maybe, maybe. maybe. Um, it, I would it say eight to twelve week old puppy. I'm not. That's too big of a window, eight to twelve weeks, because that's the difference of a dog holding it for an hour versus a dog who can three. hold it for two and a half to three. Yeah, especially a lab. That's a massive difference. Yeah. So, and and this kind of plays into our. I think our plays into our next question. I could be wrong. Uh, what about? Close. Um, what about if we leave our puppy for three to four hours? We would normally get a dog walker to drop in, but what if this isn't possible? Would a four month old puppy be able to be left in a playpen where her crate is in there also? My big thing is safety because, yeah. um, you know, I grew up with dogs outside and puppies litters would stay for hours in a very secure outdoor pen and they would kind of naturally go like in a corner, but that does not mean they're house trained, potty trained, things like that. And so if it's a secure area, the temperature is safe, if they're used to being in that temperature, there's so many things that factor into that question yeah. that I want you to, to take into account. And by the way, we would give you a more clear answer if we knew breed. Yes, yeah, you just don't If it was know. a lab, four months old. They cannot stay in a playpen. They're, they're gonna, gonna crash right through over. it. If yeah. we're talking like a little Yorkie who can't scale it and can't climb, they probably would be okay. Yeah, it's, but I wouldn't do it. Yorkies tend to be dog puppies that need more attention, in yeah, my opinion. Good. I'll so, just give an example. Don't, don't so, do it. Don't but I'm just saying that like, if you're a nurse and maybe three, four days a week you have a dog walker and then that dog walker cancels on you, one day your puppy's going to be okay, but I just wouldn't make it a regular thing. Yeah. But breed, relationship, temperament, all of these things factor in enormously. When I got a Border Collie, I knew that I no longer would have my German Shepherd who can hang out for six, seven hours, an adult, you know, until I was done with work. I knew that my border calling was not going to be able to do that most likely. And I was right. He still can't. Four hours is his max. Then he starts chewing up the walls. <laughs> I have a client who had a similar situation. She had, she started a new job. She worked from home before and she had two very large, very strong, very motivated labs to do stuff. And she actually built an outdoor kennel in her guest bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> And there it was large. It took about maybe a third of the room, but it had an area where the dogs could hang out, an area where they could be in their crate, and then they could hold it for about seven hours in there so they didn't have a potty spot. Yeah. But you could easily add in another section and for make a it into a spot. potty area. Yeah. And you're basically just doing what we call city life. This is like New York style life. Yeah. Living yeah. in the city. All right, we are going to dive into the questions on Instagram. Thank you for being patient. Uh, Am Howell says, seven-month-old lab terrier mix. When he sees other dogs, he lays down. He won't move um, until he says hi <laughs> or they pass. If he doesn't get to say hi, he'll get up and jump and bite the back of my legs. Help me. Seven months old, you get 
Control of that neck, so um, you need to be like martingale, slip leash, other training tools. You need to have some sort of head control. And this isn't for the, the laying down part, but if my dog goes and bites the back of my leg to demand something, they're frustrated, they can't get what they want, I'm immediately, for seven months old, I'm gonna go, no, and I'm gonna hold that leash out and away from me, up in the air. I'm not going to lift the dog off the ground, but it's going to be some pressure until they calm down, back off. Then I'm going to relax pressure, see if they go at me again. I'm going to pause, see if they go at me again as soon as I take like one step. Pressure, no. Pause, face your dog, relax, like be calm, confident, just wait, you know, the, the dog out, the older puppy out. Then I want to know what does your food work look like? Are you doing turn, stop and sit, food on the walk, stay, down stay, 360, walk around the dog? Like, are you working the dog on the walk as well? That's an important factor. Do um, you want to go over actually what to do about the creepy? I actually didn't hear the beginning part of the question. She, like the dog is like, they see a dog and they plant Oh, and are, they, they are they anchoring? Or are they... They're anchoring. They're refusing to move unless they get to say hi. Of course, of course. Or, or the dog is long gone. All right, so on <laughs> Slip Martingale, I'm assuming you have some kind of head control, especially for this situation because it's going to be very difficult without head control. Uh, Google that after if you're not sure what that looks like. But basically when I have a dog lay down and anchor for me, I put the leash across the hip. It depends on where we're going to. If I have a dog trying to go forward and wait for a dog to approach, I'm actually not going to reward the dog by going towards the dog or even waiting for him to approach. I'm going to do a U-turn and I'm going to go the opposite way. When I do that though, I have a heel toe technique to where I kind of slowly add a small amount of pressure by planting my front foot forward on my heel. I lean into that heel and slowly plant my toe. There's a window that we're looking for. It's the moment your dog kind of takes a step or two that I want to give slack drop food down, not drop it, but like put it by my side and motivate them to catch up. Don't reward, take a couple more steps. To so get you're them teaching moving. them to move yes. and not just come for food. And then give them the treat, have more food and try to take a few more steps. You're gonna get the anchor point again. And but he's I would also, going, I'm sorry if you already said this, but he's going in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah, the turn, going away. Get off the path. If they're still <laughs> behind you, your dog's like, no, 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 dad, we can't leave. They're, they're back there and they're getting close. Um, it's okay to make, it's going to be hard to explain, but basically I'll make a U-turn to go the opposite way from the dog, but then I'm going to make another left, almost like I'm going to then loop around the person and then come back to the sidewalk so I can go on my original route. It's almost like I'm doing a full 360 around them and then continuing on. Do you have a way of explaining that better? Because you, you just it. go in the opposite direction, one way or another. Like you're uh -huh. just you, wherever they want to go, you're counteracting it, and that's ma the main. But thing. But then you also got to get on top of it. You can't just counteract it because they're still behind you. You got to either go to the side, off the path, go up a driveway, go down a side street, mm -hmm. and then once they pass, path. Once they pass, come back and go in your original direction. Keep them it's moving. all redirection. Yeah. If you stop and freeze, you're rewarding the anchor. If you keep moving and just periodically give food or heck, maybe you got to glue food to their nose to get them past it. That's okay for a younger yeah. pup. Yeah. And, and I want to know like what he was saying about, oh, you drop your, your hand down. Mm -hmm. Well, if you haven't practiced that when it's easy, if oh, you don't no. have the relationship with your dog to follow, you know, follow hand lure or whatever it is and body language, then that's not going to work. But if you're doing that, you know, in practice, whenever your dog is under threshold, just meaning they're not, you know, too overstimulated, then, then they'll be fine. But I got to add one more little tidbit you in there. You didn't tell me it was a seven month dog. That's I, a seven month old. I, I told everybody. Did you? I, to, I told everybody. And I said adolescent dog about 20,000 times. Oh, well, fine. So yeah. the, the, now, and I've, now I've forgotten my one thing. Oh no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Here we go. If you keep letting him greet dogs in his neighborhood, even if it's only one dog out of 20, it is confusing him. They're, so, they're beginning to have more value than you. Yes. Because they're they so do. much more fun they're not beginning. in that moment. I'm sure they're, they're, not, nice they're not beginning. It's happened. You're important too, but the dog in that moment is more important. You're too. not important.
important. Um, so we want to make you important, right? <laughs> we want to make sure you're important. So I would bad cop, good cop I, I would completely pull a saying hi to dogs on the walks. It's not worth it. Dog fights happen. We get stuff like that. It happens here all the time. It's really unfortunate. And so you want to go to a play date. You want to go on a hike where like dogs can greet and it's loose leash and it's cool or a park or something. Do it. But in your neighborhood, it's a different setup. It's all about you and the dog. You're together. You're one energy. It's all that like cool nature stuff and so tap into that like make it it's not oh my poor dog can't say hi it's like no I'm with my dog and I'm bonding with my dog and my dog is learning to trust me follow me it's all of that good stuff did you already mention doing all of this in the home before going outside? well I just said practicing it like when Practice it's easy in a very when very it's easy. low key controlled environment doing the step back pivot turn with the food that's not an easy move when you have a lot of pressure and you have a dog anchoring and dogs walking towards you and you feel like the clock is ticking. <laughs> Practice it where it's easy. Uh, driveway, if you live in an apartment, use your parking route. There's a lot of great places yes, to work yeah. on it. Uh, even I, the walkway along the side of your house. A lot of That's a good places. one too because it's narrow. Yep. Yeah, it's good too. Um, this, I'm so glad. This is from um, Rock Black. I mean, I don't know if that's actually what you meant it to. Oh, maybe it's Rachel Black. That's possible. Uh, this question is a bit intense guys so i'm really glad that we started with some of the like puppier questions because this one's a bit intense even though it's a young puppy i need you all to take that into consideration when you hear our answers because this is this is um, not great okay i have a five month old golden retriever man those retrievers sometimes their biting is so bad well, it's because they are meant biting. to have a feather mouth but, but they're some of them don't have a feather it's mouth it's not the feather mouth yeah. <laughs> it's more like the border collar shark, mouth. Shark. Anytime we don't let her go upstairs or the way she wants to go on a walk, she will start biting us and the biting is so bad it's leading to bruising. I've been bitten by so many puppies, it's not even funny. It has got to be bad to lead to bruising. Yeah, that's um, We do threshold training. We've tried using the leash, obviously not working. Um, she's done leash up and out. But she jumps and bites our arms and our shirt when we do this. Should we do timeouts? If we bump into her, it riles her up more. Thank you for the context, Rachel. That was super Guys, helpful. We can give you advice and we absolutely will, but you need help. You need some private one-on-one -on -one coming to your home, working with you guys. Agreed. You, you do need it. I mean, we can give you advice. Cause, and we're going to because I have things. I mean, I'm thinking about that you're lifting up and he's kind of starting to bite the arms and stuff too. You might need to have a shorter leash. You might need to might. step you into them as that. well yeah. so you can keep them on the back step and they're kind of more reeling versus on the front step trying to jump towards you. A lot of it is body language, not just leash pressure. I know leash pressure technically is body language. But it's the movement in that's getting them to either back off or slightly settle down. You're looking for a break in the behavior so you have somewhere to start working yeah. from. What I'm gonna say is it's gonna sound like a, like a bit harsh and, and I, I really don't mean it to at all. It's just kind of is what it is. It happens to some families and it might not even have that much to do with you. It might have more to do with your dogs and their genetic temperament of just being a tougher minded dog. But there's a couple of things that I want you to think about. One is your puppy doesn't believe you. And, and maybe that's because you're not being serious enough when you're doing it. I'm sure you feel serious. I'm sure you do. But what I mean is, is like I need the world to go quiet around you and you're purely focused. You're grabbing a little bit closer, not like right next to the neck. You don't want that, but you, you don't want your arms to have to be like above your shoulders. Like, so you have like so much leash because then they will, they've got plenty of room to just jump up and, and bite. So, and, but you don't want to be right next to the collar either. There's a, there's a middle ground. What? There's a word in here that I actually really want to mention. You said leash up and out correction. It's, Think it's of it hold. less as a correction. It's more of a hold and actually like but a redirection of air. I know it is like it can easily become a correction, but sometimes when I see that word, I think about our mentality and our mindset when we're doing it. And if it's a no, and it's really loud and oppressive, you're going to get more pushback. Potentially, if you it's, are. If it's casual and it's no, and just very neutral and stoic, I know you're getting bit, so it's hard to keep that. It's almost like one of those fake it till you make it things. 
but you gotta try your best to stay low key because I have a feeling if you are amping up, this dog is already amped, there's an emotional aspect being added to it. And maybe you're not, but when I get, when I read what you said, usually there's some kind of emotion being put in without us realizing it. So I want you to think calm confidence. So when you grab that leash, um, so remember not too far up, not too far to the neck, you're gonna play somewhere in the middle and I want you to go ahead and two hand it, not because you need strength, it's a five month old, it's because you need stabilization. And so you're just gonna go out and away from you. Um, what he said about maybe taking like one step in, just to make sure you kind of lean out a bit. Now, initially, if my dog really nails me to the point of bruising, I'm probably gonna accidentally jerk the leash up. Um, that's quite possible and you might see that as a correction and like that should be enough but we're talking about a hold, okay? And so it's like an uncomfortable, not painful. This is what is so great about this technique because it is used to de-escalate dogs. It is not a correction for suppression and then see how the dog deals with a traditional correction. If you've ever heard about dogs being like popped or anything like that, that's not what this is. You might accidentally do it in the beginning. I probably would. They might would. jump up and go down and you're still holding and yes. they get a pop from it. But but we're talking about like, you're ju it's a paused due to poor connection. So we're gonna wait for just a second. Okay, there we go. Looks like we're back on. You're going to just hold out and away from you for a second. This is what you're doing. So you're doing it long enough. It could be second, it could be three, it could be five. You're not doing it way up in the air where like your dog's paws are off the ground and they're gonna pass out. Like, don't worry about that. That's not what we're doing here. It is just enough of a discomfort where the dog starts to notice this and not care about biting you. And then you will feel through the leash, take a breath, calm confidence, you're in control, you're not in a rush. You will feel the dog kind of physically back up. When you feel that, you're gonna relax. The dog is very likely to push you again. And try to bite your ankle again. And you might have to rinse and repeat a few times. Um, so this to me is really important, this aspect of it. But the next half is just as important. What is your relationship like the rest of the time? Mm -hmm. This dog seems very either entitled, pushy, permissive, frustrated, maybe insecure in some ways. So what is the, the relationship like at home? Is the training like, but become good, yay, sit, good boy, ah, no, no, ah, no, sit. Or is it calm, cool, collected, food builds focus and uh, an impulse control? You know, it's, I'm just, I'm wondering what the training looks like. I want him to see your hands as purely things that like deliver payment methods, you know, of food or play and drop it, play and drop it. Like instead of petting, holding, maybe a lot of, a lot of loving. Now loving is fine, but is the dog coming up to you and, and nudging you and you're petting? Jumping up on your couch in your lap. Cause, cause normally for a lot of puppies, that's totally fine guys. We're not saying don't pet puppies when they do that. But for this particular puppy who is really struggling understanding boundaries, whether it's from insecurity or whether it's from uh, being pushy, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. When we add these boundaries of no, not right now, place, and then when they're calm, come, calm affection, train, you know, when, when things are just more scheduled and, and the emotion that's shared with the dog is more intentional rather than just haphazard, you know, keeping the dog excited and not realizing it through the day. Uh, we wanna make sure that this is in check, this is paid attention to. Otherwise, none of the advice that we give you on a walk will follow through. You'll continue to have so much pushback. I would stop the blocking for a while because it's not working, You're, you don't have the believability. And again, you might be doing it right. It could purely be from a genetic perspective or the other things in the home that there's just a bit too much freedom and permissiveness, I, I don't know. But it, it is a, a serious thing and so that's why I have a serious tone and, and I hope that that gives you some guidelines. But just to full circle back what Sparky said, I think you definitely need some one-on-one -on -one help. After I would do that pressure, I would have, I would like shake my food pouch and hopefully that's a trigger to the dog to pay attention and I would be 
doing sit down, stay, come, sit down, stay, come, let's go, but no more than like 10 steps, turn. I would really keep that dog engaged, like 15 minute training session on a half a block. I wouldn't really go for walks for a while until that was like really good and I, I treated every walk like a class. Like yeah. you're going to a class for 20, every 30 minutes. Session. So every training session is like a class rather than a walk. But um, anyway, guys, I hope that, that that really gives you some clarity. Do you have anything to tie into that? I just want to mention what you just did to them. You guys just became dog trainers with what she just told you. Anyone can go on YouTube, anyone can go on Instagram and TikTok, and look up videos, do come sit down and say, that's not what creates a good owner for their dog, a good owner for their dog learns to understand their dog better, mm -hmm. learns to know how to work with them in different environments and different situations because every dog is different. That's what Bethany just did for you guys. She helped you become dog training owners. It's very different from just being an owner. All right, guys, thank you and thank you and we will see you same time, same place next week. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.